In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. One, two, three. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Here, here, here. What? Keep it back up. I do, I do. Uh -huh. Timer's up. It's about to, uh... Yep. Yeah, it's brightening. It's brightening on the one side. It goes. I'm not going to lie. The eclipse is pretty cool looking. I do enjoy this event. I, I think it's really neat. Unfortunately, I'm not in an area of full totality. Also, I was at work at the time that it was present, so I, I really didn't have a time to just stop and go look at the eclipse. I also didn't have the proper equipment for it either. But it was really cool to see this type of video. It shouldn't be anything to be too afraid of, I don't think personally, but this was pretty neat. For those who have been following the restart of the Large Hadron Collider that was expected for April the 8th, then I've got some great news. We're running ahead of schedule, and this afternoon we received what we call stable beams for physics. So this is the point where the accelerators are ready to switch to a regular data-taking mode, and the detectors are ready to collect that data. This is a full three days ahead of schedule, thanks to the fantastic work by the CERN accelerator teams. As a particle physicist, this means I will now be busy over the next few months in the control room collecting the data with my colleagues, and as always, I will be busy analyzing that data to see what we can learn about how our universe works on the very smallest scales. And for those who are trying to watch the eclipse on Monday, I wish you clear skies and happy viewing. It's a day after the eclipse. It's really difficult right now to find good TikTok conspiracies and creepy videos. So I'm hoping that maybe after today, tomorrow or the day after, there will be actual good videos coming out. Because right now, all it is, is it's about the eclipse. So it's been a little difficult, but with this and with CERN, I'm actually going to probably stick around for this individual's account because they do constant updates of what they, they discover at CERN and everything, and I do find it pretty interesting. So let's see what happens in the next couple of days as far as what they discover at CERN. Triskelion. It's an ancient water sign, and it has energetic properties when you coil it this way. And I take a royal cubit length, it's an Egyptian length that came down to us from the pyramids in Egypt that they used, and I make one of these coils out of that in a special way. They find this Triskelion symbol all over the world, but they found many of them embossed, engraved in ancient Ireland. But it's found around the world. It's found in Egypt. It's found everywhere when you look at it. You know, it's an ancient, ancient symbol. And because it's so old, people have different attached meanings to it, you know. 
So it's called Triskelion. I didn't know that's what it was called. I, I still learn a lot from this individual. He's one of my favorite creators as far as creating organite generators and having knowledge about different crystals and everything. This is pretty fascinating and I see this design a lot in his work. What do you guys think? It's a really satisfying design and I really think that that is what plays the biggest part about it. Crocs are proof that as a society, we are getting dumber. Did you know in the movie Idiocracy, they actually had people wearing Crocs in the future to make fun of us. And now here we are in the future wearing Crocs all the time. I go work out. People are wearing Crocs. All my little 21 year old kids that work for me wear Crocs. They're ugly. They're not comfortable. They're terrible looking. I don't understand the obsession with Crocs. They suck. And I get it. That's not a popular opinion. But I just wanted to let everyone know if you wear Crocs, you have bad taste. Hey, I'm not going to say you have bad taste if you like or wear Crocs. Me personally, I am not a fan of Crocs. My wife, on the other hand, she has a pair of Crocs and she absolutely loves them. And I can see the enjoyment side out of them, sort of, especially if you're just slipping them on to go walk the dog, go do whatever you need to take care of in the garden. I can see those purposes. But to actually have them as a out into the town shoe kind of blows my mind because one, they are not comfortable at all. There's no comfortable Crocs. They all feel the same. They all have this weird plasticky bottom with bumps on them. Doesn't feel good to me. Two, they do look pretty bad. They look like rain boots that someone has put holes in them. And to me, that's just very unappealing. But a lot of people really do like them and it's... Kind of crazy to me. What do you guys think about Crocs? Are you a fan or do you not like them? Do you like them? What is your opinion about Crocs? Because I see more and more people enjoying Crocs every day. We were talking about things that scare us. This book and it had these little buttons on it. Like it would be a fire truck and it'd say red and you hit it, it goes red. Mm -hmm. Plant. Green. Yeah. Maybe two months ago. And the book just kept on going black. Black. Black, black, cool, black, and we're like, bro, what the heck? <laughs> and I'm like hitting it, yeah, and it's like black, 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 and it was like super weird, and like you could, it just was so creepy. I literally brought it outside that night and put it in the fire pit and burnt it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that, literally you're describing like so many horror movies where it's like it's just gonna be on your doorstep the next day and it yeah. said <laughs> said thank you josh <laughs> <laughs> yeah children's wow. toys coming to life is the scariest thing i've told it on here before but the tickle me almost yes. all the night just no, laughing in the closet yeah. the fur the furbies that would like learn yeah, things yeah, and yeah. repeat them back to you i'm like no no yeah were no. furbies the first ai possibly it is possible or the antichrist mm -hmm. they did listen the to you they were the first siri and alexa that listened to you I remember I had a toy when I was a kid that terrified me, two of them actually. I had a toy where you'd pull the string on it and there was an arrow that would spin around and pick a farm animal and make the sound that that animal makes. It would always land on a cow and it was always a super slow dying battery sound and it just freaked me out as a kid and hated that toy. The second one was a story time Mickey Mouse. It was a Mickey Mouse that you could put a cassette tape in the back of and it would tell you a story and it would move its head and blink its eyes and its mouth would talk. <sighs> Nightmare fuel for me. Never liked that toy still to this day. If I ever seen it again, it's not coming near me. Oh, 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 dang it. Um, uh, I meant next year, next year. And this is the type of video that's been showing on TikTok a lot today is this April 9th after the eclipse stuff has just been going crazy online and it's really getting irritating because that's all there is is just people mocking people that believe something was going to happen during the eclipse and it's it's just really hard to find content right now. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to the people that are subscribed to the channel, thank you so much for being subscribed. And for the people that are not subscribed but still keep watching my channel, I appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you for watching. And make sure you stick around till the end of this episode because I will be running about five or six questions from Questions for DK at the end of this episode. And if you want to be a part of Questions for DK, make sure you leave a comment 
content starting with question for DK and that way I can find it in the YouTube search results so that I can answer them in a later video as well. Take a look at the following footage. This was captured by a witness in Texas as he was filming the eclipse. He manages to capture something so much more than just the eclipse. What looks like some sort of unidentified object shooting through the sky. But the question remains, what is it? Is it a rocket? Is it a UFO? Is it a creature? Take a look at this. Tell me what you think. Bruh. Look, there's something flying through the air. What the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? Yo, what the fuck? Aliens! Yo. Bruh. Look, there's something flying through the air. What the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? Yo, what the fuck? Yo, what the fuck? Now this is the type of content that I like to see. That was definitely something up there in the sky and that did not look video edited and people were definitely reacting to it in a curious and shocked manner and it was during the eclipse as well. That was definitely something, whether it was government technology, whether it was extraterrestrial technology, that was something going extremely fast and it was extremely dark. What do you guys think that that could have been? I don't know if it was going towards the sun. I don't know if it might have been a missile. But I, I really would like to know what was that? Because that was not just a normal jet or a plane. It's the day of the eclipse and people aren't realizing what this actually is. Because I just had a buddy who lives out on the East Coast who sent me this picture and whoa. So for some context, I'm in California right now. There's not really much totality at all. I mean, we're actually in the middle of the eclipse and you can't see nothing. I mean, I even took a photo in the middle of the eclipse and this is... That's what the brightness turned down. You can't see much. But with all the conspiracies, with all the craziness that people are so worried about with this eclipse, I can understand how people are kind of freaked out. You have everybody talking about the rockets going up from NASA and how the, that's apparently the moon and the sun are not aligned currently. Which I'm sitting here going, this, that's bogus, right? It's, it, it's the sun. It's the moon. Like, of course, things are where they're supposed to be, right? But I was scratching my head a little bit. like... If it's not the moon, then what is it? And I wasn't really thinking that much about that today because I'm in California. I can't see anything really like everybody can on the East Coast until my buddy sent me this. Ladies and gentlemen, um, that is no moon. God dang it. I... <laughs> I do not watch these videos through and through. I watch a little bit of them from the start, maybe the first few seconds, so that I'll be like, okay, this is good content to have a reaction of. I did not expect this to be a joke video at the end. I did not expect to see the Death Star up there. That was totally unexpected. I do apologize for that. It was still kind of funny nonetheless, but dang it. It's today. It's today. No. No. Where's the where are the burning people? Why is everyone not burning? Where's Jesus? Where where is Jesus? Yeah, dude. Yeah, have you looked outside? Yeah, I mean April 9th. Like we definitely got the day right, right? Maybe it's because like like the time zones like what like what time is it in Australia? Oh, it's actually it's April 10th in Australia. Okay, well then what the, how about the other like what about China? Yeah, this is not good, bro. This is what somebody's got to get in contact with Jesus. Let him know that like he's really making us look bad out here Like I, I liquidated my 401k. And I spent it all on scratch tickets. Like I, I <laughs> This is really bad man. Speaking of that. I actually I gotta call my boss. Let me let me call you back in a few Yeah, I know I know I know I called you a Satan worshiping sheep. Okay, but like in my defense I, I Thought the world was ending What do you mean? That's not a viable defense. That's that w there's no more de vi viable defense than that can I have my job back or not? Space Force put out another cryptic message. So you know how on Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated, if you zoom in and 
click on that little ET. It'll take you straight to the UAP reports, right? Unidentified aerial phenomenon. Well, there's always been this white rabbit link at the bottom of the page that takes you to a cryptic message. Check it out when you click this. Bends in the east. Oh, miss coming in. Oh, like something he's brewing. About to be kin. Can't put me finger. I want lies in stool. I feel what's to happen. All happened before. In case you don't know who Ingersoll Lockwood is, he's the author of those two books, Baron Trump's Underground Journey and The Last President that freakily go along with President Trump. And we know President Trump declared Space Force the sixth military branch. And Warner Von Braun warned of a false flag alien invasion and how we would know it's coming is when they weaponized space. Ingersoll Lockwood isn't the only person who scripts the future in books because we have Warner Von Braun's Project Mars which the main character in this book who colonizes Mars is a character named Elon. Of course, you know, Werner Von Braun's headstone has Psalms 19.1 on it, which says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the dome of the sky speaks the work of his hands. And Elon Musk is like, Hey, I can't get through the firmament. Does anyone want to buy SpaceX? And he posted this, saying, As close as you can get to space while being in a glass dome. Boop. But... Could he be talking about the firmament? My honest opinion is history does repeat itself, and I think that Elon is the new character that Warner Von Braun once was. And look at their affiliates. Look who all Space Force and Ingersoll Lockwood is affiliated with. Wow. See a lot of peculiar things on that list. Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated and Space Force have been putting cryptic messages in for the last year, showing us that something's coming, but now that the eclipse is on the way, I mean, could it have something to do with it? I don't know. I don't know. The the simple fact that they have little Easter eggs on their website, like the rabbit that you can click that takes you to a different website or a different video, that's pretty bizarre. And it's it's kind of fun in a way, but weird also. Like, why would they do that on a serious website? Maybe they're just playing around right in front of us and they're just laughing because we're enjoying this media and we're actually taking the time to get distracted in it probably makes the government officials pretty happy. That's probably why they do this stuff on the websites if I was to take a guess. This is this is Marshalltown, Iowa, early 1900s. And I'm looking at this because it's right down the street from where my research is based on Cedar Rapids. But I'm looking at this, and it looks the same as the rest of the, the cities in Iowa at that time, where you have brick roads, you have tracks laid for the trolleys, you have all the buildings all done. People standing around looking at this crazy contraption that this man's setting up with wonder because they have no idea what he's doing. Um, I really thought in this picture that they were trying to hide the courthouse behind all those trees. But the really interesting thing is this clock right here on this bank. I've been staring at it. I can't figure it out. I don't know why it goes to 16. I've never seen any clock ever go to 16. Uh, it doesn't It doesn't make sense. I can't find anything online about a 16-hour clock. Uh, but the weird thing is, like, it works. If we have a 16-hour day, that's a clock that runs at 50% of a 24-hour day. For some reason, they go around and they both line up and they both equal one day. Or if it's a 32-hour day, if it's 16 and it goes around twice, it works as well. One day, 24 hours, if you do like 75%, that day, that 32-hour day lines up with a 24-hour day. I don't know. I'm able to find this, this website with a converter clock as if someone just all the time might want to know what, what time of the day is on a 32 clock or 32 hour clock. It doesn't make any sense. I can't find anything online. I don't know. You go back in time and no one, there's no like records of anyone using a 16 hour day, but here it is on this bank. You look at this postcard, it's postmarked 1910, but they obviously knew not to include a 16 hour clock on the postcard. It obviously they painted, they made the facade look really nice, but here we are again. Just, just another weird find from that time. You know, that's a pretty good point. I've only seen a 16, I'm trying to think how many times, 
It was all at the same place. So one time, I seen three 16-hour clocks at an old-school diner restaurant. I cannot remember the name of the diner, but I do know it was an old restaurant. It had a whole bunch of old sports memorabilia and old clocks and things like that. And I do remember seeing old clocks that had 16 hours on them. And I was like, that's a little weird. I don't, I didn't, I've never heard of that before. So seeing this kind of made me remember that. And I'm like, dang, that's, that's actually kind of crazy. I have seen old 16 hour clocks. I'm sure there's a reason for it. I'm sure there's a reason why there's a 16 hour clock and it probably has some kind of function. If you guys know the function of a 16 hour clock better, please leave a comment down below letting me know, because that is a pretty good question. We have a very interesting video coming out of Australia. This man was driving down the highway in the middle of the desert when he comes across the road split on both sides and outpours thousands of gallons of water along with millions of fish. Keep in mind, he's in the desert. He's not near the ocean nor creeks or rivers. So what could have caused this? Almost makes you wonder, is this emergence of a new creek, lake, or other body of water, whatever it is, our earth is truly amazing. Something that should truly be impossible now is possible. Take a look at this and tell me what you think. Can people see this? Look at this. Look at the amount of fish that's millions and millions. This is like, where did, where did it come from? That's the middle of the desert. And this is, they're trying to get up. That's the fish there, look. Look at that. You can't. This world is amazing, isn't it? Look at them going across on the road. They're getting through. They're trying to get up and go. It's so beautiful. I'll be soon at Tennant Creek. This is the middle of us. Look at the birds going in for a feed. Oh man. The thing that's got me is where did this fish all come from? Well guys, Love yous and I gotta leave yous because I gotta get to the desert. I'm in the desert, I'm going to another desert. Gotcha. Dang, that was a lot of little fish. I mean, it's not quite the desert desert. There's a lot of greenery and a lot of water. It makes me wonder if they're coming off from a, a distant lake or a distant ditch or something because they're all able to travel across the road and they're just not able to get back. All the fish that is. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I wonder if it has something to do with earthquakes or if maybe this is just an odd video that it's always like that in this spot and people are just making a big deal out of it. I would like to know a little bit more. If anyone's familiar with this area, please let me know in the comments because that's that's a lot of fish. I mean, that's like a fisherman's dream spot. They would love to go collect all those little fish to use as bait. I'm sorry, NASA just found what? Yeah, this could genuinely prove that there is life out there and that it is more advanced than us. This is genuinely groundbreaking and scientists are saying this is one of the most crazy discoveries in a long, long time. So the James Webb Telescope, which launched back in 2021, has captured some amazing photos and had some insane discoveries over the last couple of years, right? But even these researchers are saying this tops it. So the telescope has discovered a planet which is very much like Earth with light. And this this is the first time ever. So the planet is 40 light years away and is very similar composition to Earth and apparently basically the exact same size. Now, this is where it gets crazier. As the statement reads, this is the first time any light has been detected as being emitted from another planet outside of our solar system. Now, you're probably thinking, can we go and live there? Is there people there, what's the light? Well, unfortunately, there is no atmosphere. You won't last very long on there. Scientists have said that one side of the planet is just in constant darkness and the other side in constant light facing the star. But yeah, of course, they're going to keep looking into this. They have said this is like the craziest bit of news, so I don't know. But make sure you hit that follow button and I will keep you updated. I don't know. I think NASA just feeds us a bunch of crap and they're just trying to make us think that there's something out there. In reality, they have no clue. They just see 
shiny lights in the distance that are stars and they just tell us that there could be life out there on them because they don't know any better i can make the same assessment i can go and look at one of the glowing stars and be like there's life out there on that star things caught on camera bro have you seen okay there's this clip of the falcon 9 i think it was in 2020 or the past three years or it might have been recent but it's a falcon 9 uh and it was uh in space and it was a live stream right and so it's showing the outside of the ship okay mm -hmm. someone spotted a mouse what on the outside of the thing you can see it on video you can see it crawl in space that's what i'm <laughs> that's what people are freaking out about man people because people are like wait a minute is this true is this a live stream from actual space or is this some type of studio stuff and they just let <gasps> something slip oh man but dude i'll show you the video it's absolutely crazy because you, you you see it up close and you're just like what do you what is he looking at and then you see something move that absolutely that's a hundred percent a mouse oh my gosh and so it makes me wonder like it's the new ratatouille <laughs> <laughs> what are they up to the what are they filming? Is an astronaut? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean that like could be an astronaut <laughs> i mean it could, it could probably live for like a little bit on the outside way no your on head the explodes but it, it looks like it's stagnant like they're floating in i don't know i remember seeing this a couple of years ago actually and i still don't believe that those are mice even if it is a fake studio and nasa's fake i think those were just pieces of trash to be honest now the one that had little ears it did look kind of like a mouse but overall i'm still pretty certain it was a piece of trash and not an actual rodent what do you guys think do you guys think that those were mice or do you think that that was just trash i'm almost certain that that was trash all right it's time to answer some questions for question for dk let's get started Comment by Little Miss Sunshine 89. Question for DK. What do you think slash or believe happens after our body dies? Super curious, LOL. Good question. I've kind of briefly touched up on it in other episodes of this show. I would like to say that I truly do not know what happens to our body when we die. If you're talking about like our spirit or our actual physical body, I can answer that, that it just decays if we don't have it cremated. But as far as our spirit and our mind and our energy, my theory behind this question is the chemical in our brain, DMT, once we are greeted by death, DMT is released in our brain and that is what I believe gives us the experience of heaven or hell. And how I think of this is if you have a guilty conscience, say you've been a bad person, you've been mean, you've been rude, you've been evil even, you've done some really horrible things, that's going to weigh on your conscience even if you do not think it's weighing on you at the moment. When you die, all of those deep held down feelings of all the bad that you've done is going to sink in and the chemical when it gets released from your brain the dmt chemical is going to give you a bad trip just like how people that take shrooms say that they have good trips or bad trips if you are bad conscious you are going to have a bad trip when you pass away same goes for if you have a good conscience, you're going to have a great, good DMT trip when you pass away. I think that that is the belief I have as far as what happens to our bodies when we die. Hopefully that can answer your question. It's not concrete, and I'm not 100% sure, but it's the most certain that I feel is the case when the time comes. Adorable name. Love it. Next comment by Lockpicking Square. How about doing a live stream once a week? I think that would be fun. I also really think that that would be awesome. I'm not 100% sure how to pull that kind of magic, though, to be honest. Not that I don't have a rig that can run a live stream. I definitely do have a PC that's capable of live streaming. There's a few things that's kind of a hindrance for me personally. One, when I collect content for reaction videos, I do not watch them live i do not react to them and then play them again to react to them on youtube i normally watch just a couple of seconds of the video just to make sure it's safe because tiktok has a lot of iffy moments where sometimes there's almost naked women that just come out of nowhere things like that so it's really difficult for me to find good content on the fly for live streaming that's problem number one Problem number two is my time. 
I still work a physical job outside of YouTube. YouTube is not my job, it is my hobby. And I have a full-time job that I work every single day other than sometimes the weekends. And when I work, it's long periods of time, so I'm constantly busy on that, that time frame. So it's difficult for me to figure out the right time to live stream. And that would lead me to ask a question to the audience that's watching this. If I were to start live streaming, do not work around my time zone because my time zone is Eastern Standard Time. I would like to know what is the best time zone for you guys? Like when you are ready to watch TV, when you're ready to sit down and watch one of my videos, or just when you have free time in general, use your time zone. Leave it in the comments down below on when is your preferred time zone, because that gives me an idea of, okay, everyone's on at this time. I can do a live stream at maybe 10 o'clock at night, my time, and it'll be a perfect time for everybody in their time zone as well. So leave a comment, let me know on that because it is something I'm interested in. Comment by SunnyGL7. Question for DK. Where are you from? Your accent has been bugging me. Thinking, why does it sound so familiar? Also, how do we know you're an actual human? So many social media accounts are AI based. I have seen some accounts that I swore it was an actual person and I got got. Trust me. I'm an actual person, at least I hope so, if we're not living in a matrix. If we're living in a matrix, then I guess I'm not an actual person. Nonetheless, none of us are. But as far as me being a real person and not artificial intelligence, I'm pretty certain I'm a real person. I am originally from Michigan. I was born in Detroit, Michigan, and I lived in a very small town in Michigan for a large portion of my life, doing farm work and, and just basically living off the land for a long time. I currently reside in South Carolina because it's extremely affordable to live here in South Carolina, and it's just really nice most of the time all year long. So hopefully that answers your question as to where I'm from, where my accent is from, and things like that. Comment from Linda Jennings59. Nine, five, three. What are desks made of and was that thing that they were made of ever alive? Were the atoms in that thing alive? Was there consciousness in that thing? So could it be possible that the desk is carrying, carrying that consciousness? Great question. I really like this question. This is a question that I can dig a little deeper on than I was able to in that video because now I have a little context to feed off of. Do I think that this desk right here is alive? No, I do not. Do I think that the materials that this desk eventually became were alive? Yes. For example, a tree. A tree grows, it regulates its temperature. That to me is a conscious thing. When you take that apart and you make something like this desk, for example, it loses its consciousness to me anyways. I believe that it is no longer a conscious thing. Its life has basically been tapped. Its energy might still be around this desk or out wherever the energy was dispersed when its life got taken. But do I think that this desk is conscious because it's carrying the atoms that carried that tree? No, I do not. I think that the tree was conscious and the metals that made this desk might have been conscious, the raw natural metals. Hopefully that answered your question on my beliefs because I kind of see it that way. All right, next comment. Comment from Arc Bills Fan. Do you have a favorite sports team? Do you have a P.O. box so we can send gifts? As far as the sports go, I'm not a huge sports fan. The only sporting event that I am currently interested in right now is the Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul fight. I think that that's going to be a fun fight to watch. Hopefully, Mike Tyson wins that fight. But as far as sports go, I really can't say that I'm a huge sports fan. I'm more of a video game nerd more than anything, and I don't even play sport video games. And as far as the P.O. box goes, I'm not really comfortable with doing that. I personally never want to accept gifts from anyone. I appreciate the offer, especially if you're offering, but it's just watching my videos is enough gift for me to be completely happy and satisfied with. I don't need no physical gifts at all, but I appreciate the thought. Comment from Tony1984, the bad. Question for DK. Hello, good sir. Have you communicated with any other creators to create a creator community? Wow, that's a mouthful. Like iTrek or Dr. OG Reacts or QHef or Mod Tricka. 
or any other people that do this type of content? Great question. I have personally been told so many times by a lot of people that I am copying a YouTuber called Barry Step. That is one individual that I've I have reached out to because so many people said our content was similar. I reached out to him to see if maybe he wanted to collaborate and make a video together just to give the viewers uh, a good video that I think a lot of them would like to see. But as far as all the other individuals I track, Dr. OJ reacts, I, I've never seen any of their content, but YouTube does show me what a lot of my viewers watch. And I can actually pull it up here because I'm not really trying to hide anything or copy anything either. I am truly trying to do everything as raw as possible and doing it my own style. I'm not here trying to emulate anybody, but I would love to do reactions with other YouTubers that are doing what I'm doing because that would just, that just sounds fun. And I think viewers would really like that as well. So according to YouTube, these are the channels that YouTube says that a lot of my audience watch all the time. Most of those people that this individual left in the comment are right here on the channels that my audience watches. So it would make sense for me to reach out from some of these other creators. So maybe we could do collaborations. I think that would be really fun. I just do not know anything about these individuals. I don't know their personality. I don't know if they like the same thing that I like and if they have the same mindset that I have. I have a very, I want to say realistic mindset where I don't just believe in everything. I kind of take things with a grain of salt and some people are just dive straight in and I don't want to upset any of these individuals or any of the individuals that watch their channels by doing that kind of content. So will I ever create a community where I try to reach out to these creators? Probably not, but it is a very fun sounding idea. And if you guys would like that, reach out to these creators saying, Hey, check out that guy, Dominic and, or, at me in their comments to help introduce me to them as well because I really don't want to just barge into someone's content that I have no knowledge about and be like, hey, you want to collab? Because it's kind of weird. That's probably the reason why Barry Step never messaged me back or contacted me in the first place. It's, it's a little odd. Comment from user-cs1ymasu2n. Question for DK. Please, could you tell me if slash how the pyramid crystals work for you. Are they genuine and make a difference or is it another gimmick? I know you think they affected your dreams, but do you find they worked on your mind when you're awake? My son has autism and ADHD, and I wonder if I should invest in one. I've tried a lot of stuff for him, so I don't want to waste money if it's just a placebo. Thank you. Great question. I want to be completely 100% upfront and honest with this individual that's asking these questions. Do these, do, and they're talking about these right here. Let me just go ahead and grab them. They're talking about these right here. They're called organite pyramids or organite generators. Do I think that these devices work? Great question. I have another one in my bedroom and I do in a way think that they affect my sleep. They, they, sometimes I forget about the organ generator, so I can't use them as an excuse that they're a placebo because I don't even remember they exist when I go to bed. Cause when I go to bed, I'm pretty tired. Even though I don't sleep that well, I still do get a few hours of sleep. Lately, since I've received these, I've had strange dreams. They have definitely affected my dreams and my wife's dreams. She has been having extremely vivid, extremely crazy dreams. And the thing is about these is she was not aware that that's what they did. She did not know that that's what their effects were. I am the only one that knows about these and their general use. So for her to say she's been having strange dreams lately, not knowing anything about the organite generators, that's a pretty good piece of evidence saying that they do have some kind of effect. Now, her dreams haven't been necessarily the best dreams, but they haven't been nightmares. They've just been extremely vivid and extremely odd. 
And same for me, none of them have been nightmares, but they've been extremely vivid and extremely odd. So for me to be able to wake up and say, dang, that was a weird dream, means that I'm dreaming. And to be vivid enough to know that when I wake up and sit there and think, that was a crazy dream, there's something going on there. Now, as far as affecting my personality or my mental while I'm awake, I do not think that they have any effect on me because I'm not around them throughout the whole day. I do not have one of these at my work, so I don't carry one in my office. Now, the individual that makes these, his name is Ascension Tools. He is the first link in the description down below. He makes these Organite generators and he makes pocket-sized ones. I'm thinking about buying one of his pocket-sized Organite generators because I would like to see if it does affect me while I'm awake throughout the day. Definitely can say though that they do have some sort of effect at night while you're trying to go to sleep. They definitely have an effect. Would I say go out and buy your kid one to try to help with the ADHD, autism? Not right now. Let me get a little bit more experience under my belt to be able to give you a confidence, confident answer in that because I do not think that it's affected my mental while I'm awake. Sorry that was really long-winded. I hope that answered your question or anyone that had a question similar to that because it is a pretty interesting piece. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode. Like always, if you are interested in any of the clips, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.